prototype versus final unit. If you think they are pretty much the same, you're tremendously mistaken. Almost everything has changed. This video is not about comparing the Intel versus the AMD processor, but about the rest of the hardware and about all the nitty gritty details no one else on the internet will ever tell you. I promised to make this video right after I got my AMD retail unit and I'm so sorry that it took me so long to make this. Now we're finally here and I went into every hidden detail of these little machines. Before we start with the comparison, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who helped to reach me 250 subscribers. I will do my very best to keep this channel going and growing so we can have a bit more fun together. Let's begin! Intel Prototype vs AMD Final Unit Fight! Oh no, my AMD unit got damaged. So we have a clear winner. The Intel Prototype beats the AMD Final Unit in a one-on-one -on -one combat scenario. Let's shake things up a little. Did you hear that? The final unit makes a noise while shaking it, where the prototype does not. So this is a clear win for the prototype, as this shaking noise is super annoying and occurs quite often. The reason for the shaking noise are the gamepad covers. They are mounted quite loosely on the final unit and wiggle around when you move the unit. On the prototype, the gamepad covers fit perfectly in place and make no sound at all. The reason for that was probably this. On the prototype, it was super easy to really badly scratch your gamepad covers. From the outside as well as from the inside. You get those huge scratches simply by sliding out the cover from its slot and naturally pushing it gently towards the top of the unit. I am not exactly sure what fixed the issue, but on my final unit the gamepad cover does not show any sign of scratching at all, even after pulling it out while pushing it forcefully towards the USB port. What has also changed regarding the gamepad cover is the color. On the final unit, the gamepad cover leans a little bit more towards red, whereas on the prototype, the gamepad cover has a more metallic and colder tone. One of the improvements that has been made is that the final version of the gamepad cover is nice and flat, whereas the prototype version is a little bit curved. You can see and hear the difference when the gamepad cover is mounted. On the final unit it fits perfectly and tapping it makes no sound. On the prototype you can see that the gamepad cover does not make a flat line with the edge of the device if I tap it. You can clearly hear the sound. The shoulder buttons are different between the final unit and the prototype. On the final unit, the shoulder buttons have the same coating as the backplate. On the prototype, the shoulder buttons are painted black. On the black paint of the prototype, you can see a scratch mark at the inside where it touches the back plate when fully pressed. This scratch mark appeared just after a few days of using the unit. The coating of the final unit seems to be much more robust as there are no signs of scratches on the inside and the outside of the button. Even after using the unit for several months now. On the physical side the trigger of the final unit has much less resistance and is much lighter to press 
than the trigger of the final unit. I don't think that one of the two is objectively better, but if I had to choose between both, I would slightly prefer the higher resistance of the prototype trigger. The higher resistance feels a bit more quality to me, and when resting my fingers on the triggers, there is no chance that I will press them by accident. The triggers of the prototype, however, have the big drawback of having huge dead zones, which, by the way, is also the case for the GPD Win 3 triggers. The dead zones of the trigger are so big that basically only the middle third registers as analog input. The rest is either 0 or 1. The final unit has partially fixed the issue as it has removed the huge dead zone from the start, leaving a much wider area for analog controls. Still, in my opinion, it has a much too big dead zone at the end. For me, that is an improvement, but in an optimal world, the dead zone situation would be exactly the other way round. So that there is a tiny dead zone at the start, preventing you from accidentally hitting the button, and no dead zone at the end, so that only a 100% button press reports a 100% button press to the system. On the sides, the prototype does not have painted the plug-in symbol next to the fingerprint reader. All the other symbols, like the SD card and reset button symbols, are already there. On the final unit, there are labels printed onto the lids for the SSD and the 4G module. This is not the case for the prototype. The prototype is labeled with a paper sticker that says WinMax 3 and has no protective plastic layer on it, so the letters will rub off eventually. The final unit has a transparent plastic sticker which protects the letters and looks better on the device. The printing on the housing is the same for both units. The color is ever so slightly different, whereas the prototype has a little red tone to it. I changed the position of the units to make sure that the color difference is not caused by the light conditions. When looking from the top, the difference is not that noticeable, but to me, the prototype on the left looks a little bit darker than the final unit on the right. That impression stays true to me, even if I change the position of both units to make sure that the color difference is not caused by light conditions. There is one little thing that the prototype and the early first batch units have in common, which is different to the current retail units. And that is this little thing here. On the prototype this is almost non-existent and on my retail unit this is a little bigger. The reason for that is probably to increase the surface area that touches the screen when the lid is closed. I personally would increase the length of this little border guard all the way down here. And that is to prevent my hands from accidentally hitting the keyboard keys while having my hands in gaming position. For me that is not a problem at all as I almost never hit the keyboard keys while playing a game. For others however this might be a huge issue which could probably be easily fixed simply by increasing the length of this little border guard. The rubber feet on the final unit feel a little bit softer than those of the prototype, which gives the final unit a better grip on the surface. This might not be caused by different materials, but simply because the feet of the prototype are a few months older than those of the final unit.
On the prototype, the SD card sticks out a little, which is not the case for the final unit. On the prototype, the lamellas of the heatsink are not properly coated and you can see the bare copper where the black paint is missing. One of the lamellas near the shoulder buttons is even a little bit damaged. That has been fixed on the final unit. The heatsink is properly coated and there are no signs of damage. If you point a light source into the prototype, you can see the copper of the heatsink. That is not the case for the final unit, as there the heatsink is completely coated black. The hinge has improved tremendously on the final unit. The prototype does not close very well after using it for some time. The final unit closes perfectly. Also, the notch of the final unit is much bigger than the notch of the prototype, which makes it much easier to reach below the screen and open the lid. Another improvement of the final unit is that the hinge is much easier to open. On the prototype, the hinge has a lot more resistance and opening up the unit with one hand or while holding it, like I do, is way harder. Even on a desk, it feels much better to open the final unit than to open the prototype. You can bend the hinge of the final unit a little bit further than the hinge of the prototype. The camera of the final unit is protected by a layer of glass or plastic, which is not the case on the prototype. The screen of the prototype is different than the screen of the final unit. On the prototype, the screen is completely flat, whereas on the final unit, the screen is slightly curved at the edges. This only becomes relevant to you if you want to apply a non-reflective screen protector like I did. If you have a look at my screen protector, it's floating a little bit over the edges and does not 100% touch the glass. For me, this is not a huge problem, as it only affects the bezel and I never had the situation that I by accident would go under the screen protector and rip it off. Still, the flat screen of the prototype is a lot better for screen protectors, as there will be no overhang at the edges. On the prototype, the letters are much bigger than on the final unit. The top row is quite different on both units. The symbols to adjust brightness have changed. On the prototype, the F6 key had no media functionality mapped to it, whereas on the final unit, the pause button is mapped to F6. The order of insert, print screen and screen lock has changed on the final unit to print screen, screen lock and insert. The position of this symbol has moved down a little on the final unit. The position of the numpad keys has also changed ever so slightly. The prototype had a turbo button on the shift key which had no effect and thus was removed on the final unit. On the bottom row, the font of the modifiers has changed. This is especially notably when you look at the FN key. Lastly, the symbol for the menu button on the right control key has also changed. There is a little bit more light coming out below the keys on the prototype than on the final unit. This is especially notable when you look at the page down key. Luckily, it has been fixed on the final unit. I am so happy that GPD fixed the backlight issue that the page down key had. In dark environments, the backlight of the page down key 
was shining right in my face often enough and was super disturbing. Another issue that the keyboard of the prototype has is that this arrow key is touching the housing when you press it. This has been fixed on the final unit. Maybe you can hear the difference. The haptic feedback of the keys has also changed. In my opinion, none is really better than the other and it's a matter of preference. The touchpad has also changed, which results in a slightly different color and a slightly different click sound. The change has happened, because during the testing phase, many of the old touchpads have failed. On the final unit, it's much easier to mount a second SSD than it is on the prototype. On the prototype, you had to use a screwdriver to push down the SSD while you close the lid, else it wouldn't work. On the final unit this is much easier and you can use the lid to push down the SSD. My prototype did not come with an LTE module, so I cannot tell you if anything has changed. This is the prototype, so if you put in your lid, you cannot push this down. Have to use a screwdriver, push down the SSD and snap it. On the final unit, this process has become much easier and you can close the lid without having to push down the SSD with a screwdriver. This is how the second slot looks with a 4G module mounted and this is the second slot without a 4G module. On the prototype we have a different battery, which according to the label has more capacity than the battery of the final unit. This black and red wire here, which goes all over the unit, has changed to finer wires on the final unit. On the prototype there is this metal shield, which does not exist on the final unit. The tapes used on the prototype and the final unit has changed a little. Both units have those parts labeled WinMax 3. It's that part below the trigger and it's engraved on the housing of the speakers. For the final unit there are two stickers on the SD card cage showing which model it is. Those stickers are missing on the prototype. In my opinion, it's the metal of the joystick which caused the scratches on the gamepad covers. Nothing has changed on the final unit, so I cannot tell for sure what fixed the issue. One last fix to mention is that on the prototype the magnets, which hold the gamepad cover in place, used the wrong glue and thus fell off. On the final unit, this has been fixed and I don't need to secure them with tape. You cannot turn on the prototype while it's closed. This is possible with the final unit. Both implementations have their advantage and their drawbacks and I asked GPD to implement the ability to turn on the unit while it's closed. That is because I had a docked setup in mind in which the unit is on my desk and it was super annoying that I had to open the unit all the time when I wanted to turn it on. I did not however think of scenarios in which the unit is in a backpack or another bag and could turn on by accident because something hits the power button. 
an optimal solution would be a combination of both, so that you cannot turn on the unit while it's closed and on battery, but you can turn on the unit while it's closed and plugged into a power supply. One of the biggest issue of my prototype unit is that there is a very loud coil whine whenever the unit is running. The noise is very annoying and I can hear it meters away from my device. Luckily, this has been fixed on the final unit. What's funny though is that the pitch of the noise changes whenever I adjust the screen brightness. Hear for yourself. Subscribe to my channel if you want to help me gain relevance so I can get my hands on more of those nice little handheld devices which allows me to make more tutorials and in-depth reviews for you. Before I end the video I want to say a huge thank you to GPD for selling me the prototype and allowing me to give feedback which hopefully helped to improve the fantastic WinMax 2. See you next time. Bye bye.